Stop the takeover of nature by financial markets. While people are concerned with the harsh austerity measures implemented in many European countries as a consequence of the financial crisis, financial actors are working almost unnoticed towards the submission of nature under their logic. We live in a so-called financialized economy, an economy dominated by finance and financial actors which focus on creating new investment and profit opportunities. The key to do it was the creation of a single global capital market through the abolition of control of movements of capitals by governments, the deregulation of large sectors of the economy, as well as the withdrawal of the state in providing essential services to citizens. Trading money, risk and associated products has become more profitable and outpaces trading goods and services for capital accumulation. This has huge implications over the daily exposure of people to financial markets in aspects which go from home ownership to pensions and schooling. In this financialization process, financial markets and its institutions take control over the productive economy where goods and services are produced, and corporations, households and banks are transformed to abide by the logic of financial markets by speculating or getting indebted. Instead of financial markets providing money to produce what people need, money is increasingly invested into financial markets to operate and expand. It literally turns the world upside down. Now, the housing bubble has burst and the huge sums of money in financial markets are now seeking new investment opportunities. And this is where nature comes into the picture. About making profits with nature, we know already the role of financial players investing in mines, oil fields or agricultural activities, or purchasing cargoes of raw materials by playing on price trends or derivative markets. But the financialization of nature currently at work is a much deeper process. Back in 2005, the EU introduced the so-called Emission Trading Scheme ETS, with the argument to reduce carbon emissions. In this scheme, companies are given a maximum of rights in the form of emission certificates to pollute the air with CO2. As the certificates can be traded between companies, financial markets were created and CO2 made a financial asset. This has created a profit opportunity for many companies and financial actors buying and selling emission certificates. EU economies continue to produce in an unsustainable and polluting way above the limits that the planet can support, rather than reducing their own emissions. The same proposals are being made for forests, biodiversity or ecosystems, and all the ecological functions that could provide a service to humanity. To submit nature under the logic of financial markets requires to define what nature does as environmental service. So the tree's capacity to capture carbon, the decomposition of waste, water purification and regulation of the climate is now defined, normalized, quantified and certified as an environmental service. Once this is done, you can start placing a price tag to each service, evaluate their current status, state a limit and concretize in economic terms the cost of their conservation in order to develop a market for each particular environmental service. So nature as such becomes a company and for this the green economy and market-based instruments are powerful tools for managing the economic invisibility of nature. With new property rights, a new phase of enclosures and extraction of natural resources and biodiversity, grabbing is taking place. So people are kicked off their lands, communities and nature are destroyed and the global south becomes the loser. All those engaged in this green economy and financial markets become the winners. This green economy is no solution to any of the problems and crises we are facing today. Whether it is to deal with climate change, to maintain biodiversity and ecosystems, or to offer a solution to unemployment and unequal distribution of goods and wealth. 
There are many alternatives to solve these problems which are outside of the logic of financial markets. We must not privatize nature, submitting it to the profit interests of financial markets. We must defend and reclaim old and create new commons by excluding markets and financial markets from their management and control. This also includes the various public goods and services. We must change the way we produce and consume orienting our economies towards real needs we have and towards more localized economies. We must promote a model of production and distribution of food based on food sovereignty, as well as decentralized and democratically controlled production of clean energies. We must shrink the financial sector, regulate it and get it under democratic and public control to make sure it is functional to real needs and the public good. Get engaged in fighting against financial markets taking over the control of nature and in the promotion of real alternatives.